Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name's Kirsty and this is Stuck in the Mud. So in today's video I'm going to be talking about what I have learned from my 40 years of having OCD and what it's actually taught me. So the first thing I wanted to say was, because this is important, when you have OCD you are stronger and more resilient than you believe because having OCD is not easy. Going through each day with your compulsions and rituals and getting through the day, it's extremely hard. It's so tiring. It is time consuming and it's so anxiety driven. Unless you've been there yourself or you know someone very close to you that goes through this, you might not understand how difficult it is to get through the days. But people still don't get it. This is the other point. People still don't really know what OCD is about. You know, we have confused it in the media where people believe that OCD is just liking things clean and tidy. And it, it, it's so far apart from that. People often confuse OCD with obsessive compulsive personality disorder. And that is more about people liking things a certain way. And often, you know, they like, they like to organize things they, and they have to have things a certain way. But does that mean that something bad's gonna happen if they don't do that? And that is the big difference. We can be quite obsessive about certain things in our life, but does it really affect your day to day? And that is, is key really to understanding the difference between these things. But people don't really understand how bad OCD gets. It's only really in recent times, I think that we, we talk about it a lot more and people may be a bit more aware that there's something bigger going on. And it is a really serious mental health condition. No matter the subtype of your OCD, they are all fear-based and they should all be treated the same, that none is worse than the other. I think we are led to believe that certain types are, and some types are difficult to deal with, believe me, I've had many of them. But the treatment for them all is exactly the same. And for me, that has been leaving them alone and having as least involvement with them as I can. You may be more likely to be impacted with OCD by something you value the most. So that could be relationships, children, your health, things like that, but not necessarily. But OCD likes to hit you where it hurts. So it's unsurprising it's gonna get you with the things that you do hold most value to. Another thing is OCD impacts you because of your sensitive, empathetic and compassionate nature. I think we feel things so much more and it's easy to see why it really affects us to the levels it does. So that has been a big learning curve for me and I'm a lot kinder with myself now about that because these are good qualities to have and they should be celebrated. OCD is likely genetic and I really do believe this and I think it's research now that they do think that this is why people are affected but are outwardly experiences like myself I think maybe in childhood things happened and I sought some safety seeking behaviours to protect myself and it might not come out in childhood, it could be something that would come out at a later stage in life. It's not necessarily something that happens in childhood. It could be just, you are genetically predisposed and something happens and it definitely kickstart that OCD behavior. So it's been helpful um, for myself, definitely to look back on certain experiences I had as a child and where it may have come from, but I didn't want to get too hung up on that because I think you can get then get stuck in blame and all these other things that are not helpful to getting better. So I've I've really just taken a look, but it's really just to see where all this may have started. But I can't be sure. It's not 100%, but this is what I've definitely experienced in childhood. And I think it possibly could have triggered my OCD. 
Also, OCD wants complete certainty. And as we know, we can't have complete certainty in life. And the more we actually lean into that, will actually lessen the anxiety and all the other difficult emotions we feel because when we let it hang around, that horrible, uncomfortable feeling of uncertainty, it will actually decrease in frequency the more we sit with that. And that's hard to grasp at first, but the more we do it, the easier it gets. I do think for me personally, and I can't say this for everyone, but the root cause of my OCD, I think, is around the fear of death and loss. Uh, and that has come, definitely, I think I've become more aware of that since losing my mum, which has been really, really difficult and so challenging going through grief. And But I've definitely realised that that fear has always been there since being a little child. My uh, OCD revolved around the safety of my family. And I definitely think for me personally, it has always been there. And I have done more research on these things. And I think for me, it's been helpful. And that's not for everyone. But for me, um, you know, researching about people's experiences has been extremely helpful because I'm leaning into that uncomfortable fear of mine and I think it has definitely been helpful in my case but everybody's different and I think having that exposure to these things and probably because of the exposure with with everything that happened with my mum and I do think for as awful as it's been and upsetting and you know it's it's awful going through something like this when it's a loss so close to you but it's actually I've actually learned something from it and I think that is important too because as we we all go through loss in life and I've actually learned something from this and realized where a lot of my OCD has come from and I do think I've actually got better around these subjects now and I'm more open to exposing myself to things like that. And I never thought that would be the case with me. I, I did. It is always something that's been there and it's been incredibly difficult for me. Um, I wanted to say as well, you know, with OCD, we hold strong moral values our moral compass is way up there and um, we have a great sense of what is right and wrong and you know what we're the safest people to be around people with OCD genuinely you know we we know you know what's good and bad we know the difference between good and bad and you really are you know we are so far apart from all these things OCD makes us try to believe you are not that person. You are so far apart from what OCD wants you to buy into. Another thing I think I have found is that OCD can often feel comfortable. We you know we spend so many years going through things like this. And I went through OCD in a time when it wasn't really recognized. I think we got the impression that it was OCD, but no one was really involved with me until from being a small child to me being in my 20s. So it was less talked about back then and they were often seen, all my compulsive behaviours and my rituals were often seen as quirky things that I did when in fact it was a mental health condition. And, you know, because it went on for so long, it did become my comfort blanket OCD. All the, the safety seeking behaviours I carried out was comfortable to me. It felt safe. It felt like my safe place. So I don't like it when people say that you enjoy being like, yeah, you're a victim because I hate victim blaming, you know. Um, people often talk about that in many self-help places and they will say, 
stop being a victim but it's not like that you know it's like I say it's your your safety zone and I think it's very insensitive to say things like that to people especially when they're struggling with a mental health like this it's not helpful in the slightest and and it's not that you're a victim because OCD robs you of so much of your life and we deserve to get that back and this is why it's so important to be kind to yourself because it's not an easy thing to go through and people just do not know the depths of despair that OCD can take you to. What I want to say as well on the back of that, you can get better. There is hope. I've been at rock bottom on more than one occasion and I thought I can't do this again. I, I can't get better. I can't go through all of that therapy again to get better because I'm here again. And you know, and it's not a straight path to getting better. You're gonna have your ups and downs. You're gonna have your good days. You're gonna have your bad days. But what is important is that you can get better. And there is hope. I think having that hope there has got me through some of the most difficult and traumatic times. So always hold on to that because the life that you want to live is there and it's within your grasp and you will get there, believe me. When we follow the therapy and we go outside of our comfort zones, you can get there. It's not gonna be easy, it's gonna be difficult and challenging, but you'll get there, believe me. Like I said, I've done it more than once and you're more than capable because you are brave. You are so brave going through this. Another thing is I have learned not to fight the mind. If we try and push thoughts out, intrusive thoughts, things like that, they're just gonna come back to us because trying to fight with your mind is just relentless and trying to figure things out, trying to reason, trying to change your thoughts does not work for OCD. The more involvement means more of the same. That is what I have learned and it has been a big part of my healing journey that is letting thoughts be there, not carrying out rituals, just sitting with that uncomfortable feeling. It is so hard but it is worth it. The more we fight and the more we try and push back on these thoughts, the more they're going to increase in quantity and that is not what we're trying to achieve when we're trying to heal ourselves from OCD. And of course living in the digital age is really hard these days because when you have OCD you can be quite secretive about the things you do and when it comes to reassurance seeking we may have lent on family and friends for that but now we live with phones and tablets and you can get that information right there at your fingertips. You don't even ask, have to ask anyone. You can, you may ask people on forums and things like that, but from all your family and friends, it can be quite a secretive thing because we've got that, we've got that ability to, to search online and it's not helpful. Uh, I definitely think some of my OCD has worsened in later life and I think a lot of that is down to the fact we have all this information at our fingertips and it's been difficult because it's so easy it's so easy just to check check online and get that reassurance and reassurance is not helpful when you're trying to get better from OCD we have to leave that urge to look online alone and I know how difficult that is when you've got it right there it's the easiest thing in the world but yeah to get better we have to get better at leaving leaving that urge to find that reassurance that we're seeking and um, what I also found is OCD is very sneaky Um, it will find the path of least resistance to get to you and it'll want to get its hooks in you it wants to reel you in it wants you to follow its lead and we have to become more aware of those ways it tries to get us involved. So all those sneaky little ways. 
um, it'll say things like, well, what if this isn't OCD? That's a sneaky way as well, because then you're, it wants to make you believe that this is something that's not OCD, this is something else, and it isn't. It is all the way OCD, but it's so sneaky, and we have to be aware of when it tries to pull that kind of trick over us. Um, what I want to say as well is Puro. Puro, I have learned, and this is a recent thing for me, I have learned that purely obsessional OCD, which I think has been my main issues in later years, because when I was younger it was very much about rituals that I had to carry out, and physical rituals, whereas purely obsessional, where I've, it's been mainly in my head, it's been very thought-based and intrusive thoughts, but there is the compulsive element, because the purely obsessional term makes us it leads us to believe that this is not compulsive. And the compulsion element here is the ruminating over these thoughts and getting involved with them. And I found that really a, an interesting concept because I, I was like, of course, you know, I'm always getting involved in these thoughts. So there is a compulsive element, but we just don't see it the same way because it's not physical. And last but not least in today's video, what I wanted to say was is you're incredibly brave because going through something like this is so debilitating, so hard, and you deserve to get better. OCD does not deserve to be ruling your life anymore. And you deserve it, you're amazing. Getting better from OCD is in your grasp and you can do this. So thanks for watching today's video. I hope it has helped you and maybe taught you some things that you didn't always realize about your OCD. Please remember to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel because that helps me a great deal and I love producing these videos for you and I hope it's helping many of you out there. So thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.